take you guys through uh, the whole day on um, what happened. Um, you know why things went sideways. You know what what kind of triggered this, and you know they'll give you a, a nice timeline of it, um, and also then take some questions. The first thing I want to do is recognize the uh, six responding parties that helped out today because we did need help. Uh, the De Department of Correction is the first one. They sent uh, a lot of uh, their uh, like response team. The Hamden County, Suffolk County, Plymouth County, uh, Barnstable County, and Norfolk County. So we had five different jails and the DOC respond um, to assist us. And so what happened earlier today uh, was that in the process of trying to make our jail a little bit less suicide uh, problematic, problematic with suicides, the, um, we had to move inmates around. And part of the it problem was that we had a lot of inmates that were housed in, um, like the new admissions were housed in, like uh, single cells, double cells. And so we had to move them out to a kind of communal setting. And so that required that we move around other housing units to make, to make that happen. Because with inmates being in single cells or double cells, that cause, that's, it's a risk for suicide. So in the process of moving around um, them, the units in one housing unit, sorry, the inmates in one housing unit, uh, some inmates, not all of them, there was actually about 17 ringleaders in that one unit that had, I think it was close to 80 inmates, I think it was 75 inmates, 75 or 80 inmates. 17 ringleaders uh, decided to stir the pot and they decided to have a protest about being moved. They didn't want to be moved. Now, this housing unit that housed uh, these inmates, they, we don't have locks on those doors. And the reason we don't have locks on the doors is because we don't have toilets in the cells. We're not allowed to lock the doors if there's no toilets in the cells. So we had a volatile situation where we had as many as 75, 80 inmates that were uh, agitated and they also did a lot of damage, probably anywhere from between 100 to $200,000 worth of damage from our early estimates. Um, and we had to basically try to de-escalate the situation. We uh, so things started really going sideways around 9 a.m. And I was notified probably within a half hour or so that things were going sideways. So I immediately came down as well. Um, the you know by probably 11:30 we were in the process of uh, responding to demands. They actually wrote a list of demands, and you know the list of demands. Some were not possible to be a com this is a photocopy of it but we couldn't accommodate all of these but some of them we could so I responded in writing to try to de-escalate the situation and they as soon as they received the letter they tore it up and threw it right back out the window yeah. so they were not interested in um, you know the, those 17 ringleaders they weren't really interested in cooperating and so um, you know when we tried to de-escalate it didn't happen. We tried again. We tried numerous times. We, you know, we, we sent in different people, different levels of uh, experience and to no avail. So at around probably close to three o'clock, I think it was, around three o'clock, uh, the decision was made to, uh, you know, enter the housing unit and DOC took up the rear and the uh, BCSO followed by the other jails. So the um, uh, Bristol County Sheriff's Office, followed by some of the others, uh, you know, the other jails, they went in through the main entrance to the housing unit, and they quickly took back the housing unit. It, um, there were no injuries to inmates or to correctional officers, and that was the number one goal. The number one goal is to de-escalate this without having to, sh you know, use a show of force. But we had to uh, take back the unit, so we did so, but without any injuries to inmates or to um, correctional officers, which is I consider that a win. Um, so that was taken back pretty quickly. The 17 inmates that were the ringleaders, they were uh, spread out to other county jails uh, throughout the state uh, so that they are not going to be in a place where they can stir the pot again here. And the other inmates were then dispersed throughout the rest of the, um, the uh, sheriff's office, like the, the Dartmouth House Correction. Then we had to deal with the second housing unit. The second housing unit was far more mild. The second housing unit was right next door to the first housing unit. The second housing unit um, had 63 inmates in it, and the second housing unit was agitated, but they weren't 
really at the level that the first housing unit was. Uh, the first housing unit, like I said, has uh, between one hundred and two hundred thousand dollars worth of damage is our estimate. The second housing unit, there was far less damage. They destroyed a, uh, you know, a control console that opens and controls the doors. Uh, that was destroyed, so that basically made that housing unit uh, like unusable at this point. And so we had three agitators inside that housing unit. They've also been sent out to other uh, sheriff's offices, other uh, house of corrections in different counties.